Hey there, it's Dr. Justin, and today's video is going to be addressing and looking deeper at thyroid function and depression. Again, depression affects a significant percent of the population, and a lot of the medications that are being used, the SSRIs, the, the lithium, the, the tricyclics, these medications, they do not work well in the long run. Acutely, these medications could be helpful to prevent a suicide or a, a manic type of state, but long term, they do not address the root cause of why the physiology and the brain chemistry is out of balance, and again, does not provide a long term solution. And again, the common thing we see with these medications is the dosage tends to have to increase over time. You almost never lower the dosage unless you're seeing a functional medicine doctor that's addressing the underlying issues. And even if they even if you are addressing the underlying issues, you need to be working with the prescribing MD who prescribed the medication in the first place to wean off. These aren't medications that you ever want to come off cold turkey. So you got to be working with your functional medicine doctor as well as the prescribing MD or psychiatrist that put you on these meds in the first place. So again, let's look at kind of some of the correlations in the literature. There's an excellent report called the STAR-D report. It was published in the American Journal of Psychiatry in 2008. And the PubMed ID is right up there. Just punch that into Google and you'll find it. But this study was really interesting because it looked at T3 thyroid hormone, lyothyronine. The, um, the conventional name is a cytomel, if you will. But what they found was that giving T3 in conjunction with lithium. So they had one group giving T3, one group giving lithium, and they found the T3 was about 60 to 70 percent better regarding putting patient into remission. So they had this scale called the Hamilton scale, and the Hamilton scale is a 17 point scale, and anything seven or below they consider remission. So again, 24, almost 25 percent of the patients on T3 went into remission, so about one in every four. And you could see with the lithium group, about 16% went into remission. So one in every six or seven. So you can see definitely like a 60 or 70% improvement on the T3 group over the lithium. All right, so T3 definitely fixed that issue. Now again, we're gonna talk about that it's not just a T3 deficiency that's, that's causing or causing this depression-like symptoms. It's something deeper. And in functional medicine, we always take a step back from the symptoms and we look at the systems, right? It's the systems here. When the systems are out of balance, right? Here's our systems. And within the various systems, we have our detox system. We have our hormone system. We have our gut. You may even have neurotransmitters, which a lot of like neurotransmitters, again, will correlate with the gut because a lot of serotonin is made in the gut. So you can see these are the systems here that we're looking at primarily. And these systems, when they go out of balance, they actually will affect the symptoms. Okay. And when we're dealing with depression, it could be something like depression. Right? It may even be something like mood, just not feeling good. It could even be something like anxiety. Again, we can keep on lining up all of the symptoms here. We have a systems-based approach, and this is what makes functional medicine so different and unique than conventional medicine. And if we just saw it, looked at T3 and said, well, T3 is going to be the fix. Well, that's still a symptom-based approach. But what we have to look at is say, well, how's the thyroid, the thyroid would be in the hormone section here. How's the thyroid functioning? Let's look at the thyroid, TSH, T4 total and free, T3 total and free, antibodies, reverse T3, T3 uptake. Let's look at all those markers and see how the thyroid's functioning and see where the thyroid is dysfunctioning. Let's look at the adrenals. Let's look at detoxification. Let's look at nutrient absorption. Let's look at the gut and see how absorption is doing. Let's even look at the stressors. So there's one more element I didn't add to this approach. We also have the stressors, and this is very important. And a lot of even functional medicine doctors even ignore this element too, and this is vital. So the stressors are very important. This could be diet, right? This could be diet. 
All right, maybe to be on an autoimmune diet, a rotation diet, right? Gluten-free. This could even be lifestyle, right? Lifestyle is managing stress. Are you meditating? What time are you going to bed? How's your meal spacing, right? Are you drinking enough water, right? Could even be exercise. Are you doing CrossFit five days a week and burning yourself out? Are you sitting at a desk all day? Are you not moving? Are you moving enough? So we want to look at the stressors because these stressors actually fit right into the systems as well. So in functional medicine, the the, where we really pull out our magnifying glass is going to be here looking at stressors and here looking at the systems. And when we look at the symptoms down here, we just trace them back up to the body systems. If we see mood or anxiety, I'm going to look deeper at the gut. I'm going to look deeper at the adrenals and thyroid. So this gives you an idea. When we see the STAR-D report saying that T3 helped about 60 to 70 percent better putting people into remission from their depression, that gives me a lot of hope and a lot of motivation that it's a hormonal system that's not working. And the beautiful thing about it is, in this study, they looked at side effects. And what they found was, with the lithium group, there was two and a half times more side effects giving the lithium. Two and a half times more side effects. So T3 did better in that side too. And interestingly enough, when you give one of the main common side effects of giving lithium is you're six times more likely to suffer from hypothyroidism. So not only will lithium cause hypothyroidism, the hypothyroidism could also be driving the depression. So there's even some research saying that lithium may help acutely, again, two and a half times more side effects, and it may even be making your thyroid issue worse down the line. That's why one of the things we'll use, we'll use a lithium orotate, not a lithium carbonate, but a lithium orotate for Graves or hyperthyroid symptoms to cool the thyroid down. So we just want to make sure that we're not giving medications that are going to cause side effects and also make the problem worse down the road. And that's kind of where the conventional setting is heading down. Again, if you're on one of these medications, feel free to talk to your prescribing physician about it. Don't come off them by any means. So again, remission, about 60% more remission and about 250% less side effects. And again, this just gives you the motivation to look deeper at the stressors, the systems, and the symptoms. This is my SSS approach. That's the SSS approach. And that's what we really want to be looking at. And we know thyroid hormone has a major effect on brain chemistry. It has a major effect on how all hormones are metabolized in the body, right? Hormones get metabolized by thyroid hormone. So if we don't have enough thyroid hormone, we won't be able to metabolize them down. Thyroid hormone has an effect on everything. So if we can't metabolize and break these byproducts down, then we're not going to be able to have healthy hormone function. So again, this is Dr. J here signing off. I hope everyone got the major link here between thyroid hormone and depression. And don't just walk away saying, I got to get T3 from my depression. Look deeper. Find a good functional medicine doc if you need help. I work with patients all over the world. Click on screen or click below and even get my free thyroid video series to get more information so you can help take control of your health. Again, this is Dr. J signing off. Have a great day.